Hi! Didn't see you there. So today's video is about my internship. Well, not about my internship, but my process of getting my internship. I am currently doing an internship at Google as a SUI intern, software engineering intern. I got a lot of different questions about it. I know I had a lot of questions going into the process. So let's get into how this all started. Okay, so I know a lot of people like knowing a timeline of how long things take. So I have went back and screenshot every single one of the emails I've gotten to my application all the way to my acceptance letter so you guys know how this timeline actually looks. Every job starts with an application. So I applied to Google on May 4th, 2018 for fall 2018. Went on the website, sent my resume, pretty easy. I will insert a pic of my redacted resume without my personal information so you guys can see what it looks like. Maybe that'll help you out. I've had um, two internships before because I go to a co-op school so that's probably the most important thing on there. Not really much of a side projects gal myself though I did have some at the time. So then on May 4th, like four hours later, I got the email to do the coding sample and I do not know how this coding sample works. A lot of people were saying like, oh, everyone's getting it, but I know people who didn't get it. I think it's pretty standard once you have like one internship or something under your belt. Like, I don't know, I'm not a recruiter. I'm giving you what I've heard. Basically the coding sample will have two questions or at least when I did it, it has two questions. I didn't really prep for this um, coding sample. I know people who were, you know, grinding leak code as soon as they got this coding sample. Again, I'm not about that life. I have confidence. Um, to do this. I just kind of went for it. I did the practice one before and then I went into the actual coding sample. I think the coding sample really is just to get a sample of what your code looks like for their packet when they are re reviewing you. That's really the actual only runtime kind of environment where, where they will see your code. The other ones will be in a Google Doc. On the 14th, so 10 days after that, I probably completed the code sample a few days before that. I was emailed saying, okay, this is gonna be a recruiter for this process. And then I was also sent a doc to fill out with what I'm interested in doing at Google. And then on the 16th, two days later, I got my interview schedule. This is like the big thing. This is when I started to grind. Not leak code, I did a little bit of leak code. Personally, I'm not a fan of leak code. So I read through Cracking the Coding Interview, I think like the first main five chapters just to kind of refresh my knowledge on different kinds of problem solving techniques and things like that. I'd say it was helpful. I kind of actually put like my schoolwork to the side for that weekend and that weekend just focused on CTCI and I think it really did help. I had to get my mind into a certain zone and I got it into that zone. So in the email, when you get the interview, Interviews. They send you resources um, to help you prepare for those interviews and I spent all weekend also looking at those resources and I watched every single video on YouTube that you know Google came out with that was like you know sample interview like this could be an interview question or advice for internship and yeah I really really wanted this internship it was definitely worth it to me to spend that weekend just focusing on it you're probably gonna find your interviews are scheduled right after one another and that is perfectly normal each one is 45 minutes you are sent a different Google Doc for each one so I should probably talk about the interviews a little bit I signed an NDA as you will if you get the interview um, so I can't really talk much about the questions or anything like that, but a little Googling goes a long way. You'll need to know how to do that if you want to work at Google. Like this isn't a get to know you session. They're going to go into a technical question and that's what that 45 minutes is dedicated to. Um, you know, they may ask a few fluff things, which is nice, but ultimately it comes down to the technical question. And when that question comes around, you want to make sure you completely understand it. Um, I like to rephrase it back to them, just kind of in my own words. So after I understood the question, I give an example. And I'll ask a question about maybe like an edge case. And that just gives you a greater understanding of what the interviewer is thinking when they are thinking of this question. So once I had those, I propose the first thing that comes to my head. That thing is often not the best. Initially, here's what I thought, but I realized, you know, um, it's too much space we can have a better runtime or different things like that. Not only will that give you more time to think, it shows that you know that that is a possible solution, but you also know that it's not a great solution. And then I think about how this could better be implemented and I propose that solution. I'll either say, 
okay, good. Or they'll be like, um, no, we can, we can do better than that. I like to ask like, um, okay, is it okay that if I start coding that solution because they may want something better. Once you get the go ahead, um, start working on it, completely communicate everything. Once I'm done it, I will out loud run through the case that I wrote down that I proposed. At the beginning, as an example, I will run through it and maybe run through an edge case. Make sure you have the edge cases all lined up. Just kind of make sure it's Gucci, you know? Um, sometimes at the end, they will ask you like, oh, we can optimize this even more. Essentially, whatever you do, be prepared to take it a step farther than what you expected. It's honestly pretty fun, I remember going out of it and thinking, you know, that was fun. I enjoyed that. So for my experience in these interviews, the first one was really, really good. I can't think of anything that went wrong. The second one was also really good in that like everything went well, but um, they were using a data structure I am a little uncomfortable with. So it intimidated me at first and I believe held, held me up a bit at that beginning. I would say if there's something you're not expecting or there's something you're afraid of, don't let it shock you because it very well could come up and just have the confidence because I kind of lost confidence and I had to regain it during the interview so I would say the second one also went well just not as well as the first one and after that um, on the 25th I was scheduled for a third interview on the 31st so this third interview does not always happen sometimes you get an offer or a rejection right after in order to do that you have to be pretty strong one way or the other and this was just a 45 minute technical interview exactly like the ones i just did people think you know does it get harder does it change does it i don't know it's exactly the same so here we are a code sample and three interviews later i actually remember like how like stressed i was at this time but like at the same time i could even focus on being stressed because i had school coming at me left right and center so on june 11th i got the email that the interviews went well i'll be moving on to the next stage of the application process which is the project search stage or better known as host matching so a lot of times at this point people are like like yay i have an offer like blah 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 no, this is not an offer. This is simply a huge pool that Google has of candidates that their employees who want interns can choose from. And not everyone gets selected. So now you'll be sent a yet another long form to fill out with your preferences, um, like in terms of technical things, in terms of what you're interested at Google, things like that. You want to fill this out very smart. So my advice for this, you want to be open to anything but also specify a few things. So I basically say that I'm interested and open to a lot of different things and but I really like Google's products that are this, this, and this and I'm interested in like this field of computer science. That approach worked out pretty well for me because soon enough and that is exactly three days later I got a host matching interview. Basically they will send you an email and it just says intern manager, office team, and project description and you just schedule a meeting to talk with that manager. So I actually got one on the 14th. I did mine and I think the day after I got another email saying I have another team interested in me. So in terms of how these interviews go, they are around 45 minutes and it's not technical, it's not trying to test you really. It's more about getting to know you and if you'd be a right fit on the team. It's very, very low stress, but at the same time, you, if you're anything like me, will be stressed anyway, because that's how it is. The main thing that they do is they tell you about their project and about themselves, and they'll often ask you about yourself, things you're interested in working on, if it's using a certain language, your experiences in that certain language, and different things like that. Very low stress, and then there's like a period where you can just fire questions at them or at least that's what I do at the end um, because I usually have a lot of questions so I found both of them interesting but at the same time I kind of had an idea of what kind of route I want to go to in terms of um, what I want to work on so the second project matched me better but I didn't want to like lose the opportunity and like I said, I know I will be interested in whatever I work on. I was very honest with my recruiter and you know, I told her that. Within like maybe three days, I got the response from the first host that I talked with and it basically said that although they enjoyed talking to me, they have found someone else who they think is a better fit and blah blah blah. Um, which basically means you're still in host matching. But luckily, I got matched with 
the second project. So I got matched on June 25th. So I just got an email from my recruiter saying, um, I have to confirm my interest in this project within two business days. This is kind of where, you know, the journey starts to slow down and things are kind of like being confirmed. Life is good, you know? By the 28th, my offer had been approved, which is pretty dope. I don't know how your offer would be disapproved, but also at the same time, I was worried. I was waiting for that email to like announce this to anyone. Then on July 2nd, I got my official welcome to Google email. It goes, you're our newest Googler or Noogler. And oh my gosh, I was so happy when I saw that. I'm like, this is what I've always wanted. So that's the main interview process. So I'm not really gonna go into what happens after that. There's a lot of contracts and things to fill out and stuff to do and hotels to book. So I think that's everything. So that's basically everything when it comes to getting the job. Um, once you have it, I can make a video about that. Again, probably will let me know if you guys would like to see that. Hopefully this video broke down the process some more to you guys, give you some insights on what it's like. Again, always open to questions, so leave them in the comment box if you have any. Thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate it. So we'll see you next time.